When I hear the word water, I think probably the most exciting, chemically complex, and very misunderstood resource on the planet. My interest in water is beyond just the technical aspects of what I do. Without water, civilization can't exist. There are no substitutes. Uh, it's not like energy. We have to find a way to continue to use it well, to recycle it, to protect it, uh, and to make it accessible for everyone. Namibia is probably one of the most beautiful countries on the African continent. It has an abundance of resources, but it's a desert. Sub-Saharan Africa is heading towards a serious crisis around water sustainability, but it does have a bunch of water in the form of the ocean. It's such a niche innovation area, especially because I think over the, over the past couple of decades, the conversation around water is changing. And fundamentally, the focus for us is to develop technologies that are class leading, that are implemented on the African continent, fit for purpose for African type of problems. Nafasi is a business with a very simple objective, to create solutions and partnerships and intervene within the water value chain to achieve the primary objective of keeping Sub-Saharan Africa's water resources sustainable. And the biggest challenge for us as a business is knowing where to start, right? because the problem is so big. So we've chosen to start in extremely chemically polluted environments and the seawater desalination environment, and we're now moving into the wastewater reclamation space in the public sector. When we talk about the Vet Vatis Run coal mining areas, we've got four basins. Where we are is the eastern basin. Without water, we cannot live. Without water, of course, the environment itself won't exist. So it is a critical resource. And it is also an enabler, you know, for economic development in the country as well. Johannesburg has a really interesting history. We call it the Gold Reef for a reason. But what that means is there are massive cavities underground. And it's become an underground reservoir. The danger with it is that it's a reservoir that is not clean. There's also a very large amount of metal, and in some instances, radioactive components. That is really the risk that we're trying to mitigate, is to prevent the water rising up to the point where it will start decanting, because then the impact um, you know, to the environment will be huge. Acid mine water has to be purified or treated before it can be discharged into the natural stream. Currently, the plant is treating 93 million liters of water uh, per day. And our target is 300 million liters by 2030. We have installed pumps into the old shaft mines, which is three of them, and we pump that water from underground. When I hear the word water, I basically think of life. So it's a very precious commodity and something that we have to look after. This is where we discharge the water treated from the plant. The water has been treated to an acceptable quality to be discharged into the flay. What is important is that we constantly monitor the quality of the water that we discharge. Growing up, uh, I just thought water is from the rain. From the rain to the streams, and then we drink. After joining Nafasi Water, now I can see water as a serious resource. At the same time, it's very scarce. So if we don't treat it with high importance, we will definitely suffer from water stress. My role is corrective and preventive maintenance duties on equipment in order to minimize plant downtime. Whenever the plant needs me, I am there. I take full responsibility of the plant. When we're looking at opportunities within our business, we are finding ways to, to maximize the opportunity space for young women. Engineering is not always the easiest career for girls to stay in. 
because it requires lots of travel, you're away from home, you're working shifts. So it conflicts quite easily with the home responsibilities that young women tend to have. I first started my career in male-dominated environments. You have to work harder as a woman and the opportunities are not as much as for, for males. NAFAST is a woman-led organization where we have about 44% women. We're coming up a lot more proactively with policies and ways of operating that make it more sustainable for girls to stay within the career. Having that dominance and that uh, equity in the inclusion of women, for me, is just the right thing to do. And that's why we have the program like our ESD programs. We don't see that as a legislation requirement, but as an imperative. I'm one of the beneficiaries of the ESD program. ESD is an enterprise supply development program that's uh, aimed mostly on uh, SMMEs to support them to grow their businesses. I was in corporate and then started a business in mechanical engineering. It's not easy at all to get your foot into this industry as a black female. But with Nafasi, there's been a lot of support. I'm happy to be part of Nafasi. As a small business, it's still easy for us to be adaptable, agile, and we are always willing to be part of our clients' innovation. I'm one of the oldest people in the organization, the young team. These are our students, Jessica and Daniel, our chemical engineering graduates. So what's the objective of the whole test? So we're testing to see what the concentrations of manganese are in universities. So it's not passing design this graduate program. And the reason we do it as an organization is to give people an opportunity to have a feel of the industry. And as we know that as a country struggling with regards to the water infrastructure, water treatment, we need to ensure that there's always engineers who can work in the sector. Um, I'm just a girl from Soweto, a very big dreamer and a very ambitious girl. I started as a lab intern and then I became an acting plant operator until I got this position as senior process controller. I like solving problems, that's why I got into engineering. There's a whole magnitude of different skills, um, technology, that all has to come together when you operate one of these plants. So Nafasi's done that exceptionally well over the last 10 years or 15 years, being able to pull together these different skill sets and make sure that the team hums as this like, well-oiled machine in terms of making sure these plants work the best that they can possibly work. We've been doing this for 13 years since we commissioned the Irongo desalination plant. It requires lots of innovation, lots of engineering time. So our intake line is 1.6 kilometers long, 10 meters below sea level, and we always get specialist divers in to inspect it. So you're currently busy with that? Yes, we continuously have to check uh, the condition of the pipe. So we've always focused on membrane technology and really understanding how membranes work. Membranes really help us to separate out all the stuff that we don't want in the water at the end of the day. And because you have to always be on the cutting edge of water technology, what we've been focusing on more recently now in not only trying to separate out the stuff that we don't want in the water, but then finding value from what we're separating out. And there's some really good technology out there that enables you to access those minerals so that you can actually extract them and generate a different revenue stream. It is a lot of responsibility because of the impact of uh, the plant or the project on, on the Rongo region and actually the whole nation. So every technology we apply, we have to look at sustainability. Water is life. So this is what you could say is a lifeline. The pipe on my right comes from the desalination plant where 70% of the water is desal water and the other 30% is from a natural aquifer. Without this, the economy would be stagnant. The whole region is dependent on the Ronga desalination plant. Abundance and scarcity exist in a very shared ecosystem here. The boundary is the beach. 
abundance of water, scarcity of water. And technology is the bridge between the two.